Okay, employment at will. Now, how many people here, let's do another little vote here. How many people have ever heard, I don't understand why I have to worry about this employment law stuff. I don't understand why I have to worry about giving warnings and coaching and everything. I, I, we're employment at will. I can fire anybody at any time for any reason. Okay, how many people have heard that? I'm, yeah, there you go. I love this because I can see the hands go up. It's like we're right there, right? Yeah, thumbs up. Absolutely. Okay. Now, oh, no, thank goodness. Thanks, Beth. Well, I know, Beth, you, uh, you run a tight ship over there. You got a lot of, a lot of this stuff you've been pounding into people. Okay, now. Uh, yes, you do. Absolutely. Now, freeze right there. Are we here to win lawsuits or prevent them? Any thoughts on that? Prevent. Thanks, Emily. Absolutely. And I just love this. Well, we would, we would win this in a lawsuit. Tori's telling me the same thing. Yeah, here to prevent. I know. Let me tell you, I avoid Catherine. Oh, yeah, Catherine. Absolutely. The township does not like spending attorney's fees, do they? They're just like everybody else. And I just love this because I want to hear somebody talk about uh, lawsuits. Oh, yeah, but we would win that. Oh, my gosh. Uh, do you realize what you're getting into? Do you realize that you are looking at fifty to two hundred thousand dollars in attorney's fees? And that's to win. Okay, I'll tell you right now. The cure is worse than the disease. You know, it's a lot like getting cancer. Yes, there's a lot of cancers we can cure these days. But I will tell you right now, I've never met anybody who went through those treatments that didn't have lingering effects. You know, later this year, we're gonna be doing a session on healing the human brain. And I will tell you, I talked to a lot of cancer survivors about how to get rid of brain fog. Well, that's the same thing with a lawsuit. Most of my clients would not survive. They would not survive an employment lawsuit because of the attorney's fees. Okay, so I'll tell you right now, and we'll talk about this today a little bit, but we're going to talk about this in great detail when it comes to the coaching, documenting, and warning employee session. None of my clients have ever been sued who follow what I tell them to do. I am that confident. I've been in human resources for 40 years. I've been practicing exclusively in employment law for 25 and I'll tell you right now, you coach, you coach, you warn, you warn, you fire. And you document this stuff in, in the later session, we'll be talking about that. Why does this tie into employment at will? Employment at will says, and this is on page one, I can fire anybody at any time for any reason. And that is exactly what that says. Okay, think of employment at will. And this goes way back hundreds of years ago to the common law. Employment at will is like a big shield that you will hold in front of you, a big wooden medieval shield. And so if somebody fires an arrow at, at you, it'll hit that shield and it will protect you. Everybody with me? Okay. Now today, that shield has about a hundred one inch holes on it. If an arrow goes through one of those holes, which is an exception, to the employment at will, it's gonna get you and it's gonna hurt. Yes, you can fire anybody at any reason because you feel like it, but you can't do it for an illegal reason. And I'll tell you right now, before 1964, so you wanna flip on over to page two, there really were not too many illegal reasons, but then Title VII came along, 1964. Uh, it says that you cannot discriminate or base employment decisions on someone's race, color, religion, national origin, and sex. Okay, then later we got pregnancy, later we got age, later we got disability, and there's a bunch of other things on there. Okay, so let's just play this game a little bit. Let's say that you fire somebody and they're not doing a good job. They're not doing a good job. They're, they're late to work. They're working. They're doing something wrong. Okay. 
<laughs> All right, you fire this person. Okay. How many people here, you are male or female? Okay, I'm gonna get my thing going here. So there you go. I have a gender. How many people here have a gender? Now looking at my screen here, I can kind of tell some of your genders. Okay, so how many people here have an age? You're over 40. Okay, how many people here have a skin color? You're not clear. And I always love this. Here's one of those big misconceptions that I hear all the time. Well, Title VII and race discrimination, that only protects blacks. No. Actually, it is amazing how little we know about employment law in this country. It is amazing the number of, and Perry calls it reverse discrimination. It's not reverse discrimination. You're not allowed to discriminate against white people. So let me tell you what happens in a lot of these cases. I'll talk to one of my clients and they'll say, well, you know, I got this guy. He's not doing his job. He's doing this and this. Do I have to mess with all this coaching and stuff and warnings? Can I just fire him? I mean, come on, he's a white guy. Okay, freeze right there. Does that bother anybody? Are we basing employment decisions on someone's race? Okay, I'll tell you right now, if you have someone who is, let's say that they are Hispanic and they're messing up, you give them a coaching, coaching, warning, warning. You wanna make sure that you got your backside covered here but then someone like me wanders in it's like oh come on it's just a white guy can't I just fire him we've treated those two people differently you will not only get sued you will lose you will lose okay so we're going to look at this throughout the race okay i tell you everybody has a protected class everybody has something pregnancy uh, age, race, religion, and look what else is in here, okay? How many folks have people working for you who were, were or are in the military? Anybody? Yeah. I'll tell you, we got a lot. That's a protected class, uh, you know, equal pay act for, rate, for uh, gender and everything. Now think about it. You're holding this employment will shield in front of you. You can actually see through it. And how I can always tell that somebody is gonna be paying a lot in attorney's fees is whenever I hear somebody say, yeah, but we're employment at will. We can fire them whenever we want. Yeah, but let me clue you in. When you go to court, the truth does not matter. Now, in case you haven't figured it out yet, in case you haven't been to one of my sessions before, I'm very frank, okay? I live this stuff on a daily basis, and I am here to tell you right now, the truth doesn't matter. All that matters is what can you prove. And if you don't have any coachings, if you don't have any warnings, if you don't have any documents, you're in bad shape. Now, freeze right here. I just got a call this morning, ironically, client of mine had a supervisor, who is coaching an employee who is not doing a good job. That employee is screwing up. That's what happens, right? That's why we're there to supervise people. Okay, so the manager sits down, <clears throat> talks to him, trying to be helpful, and says, well, you're not doing this, you're not doing this, you're not doing this. You know, I've seen you having problems. Maybe you're just too old to do this job. Okay, does anybody feel that an arrow just went through the hole of the employment at will doctrine? Oh yeah, and that's a big one. That's a big one, all right? You know why? Because the average age of a juror is over 40. <laughs> boy, oh boy. You know, it's like pregnancy discrimination. You don't wanna do that. Because by the time, yeah, cringing, Tori. Emily's giving me a big yikes. Welcome to my world. And I'll tell you, my job is to make sure you don't get sued. Okay, so any questions on employment at will? Does that all make sense? It's nice that it's there, but I will tell you right now, it's like you're on the high wire in the circus. If they still, well, they still have Circus Soleil. Okay, they don't have regular circuses anymore, but they got Circus Soleil. Let's say that you are 50 feet in the air 
on a tight wire. Okay. Well, you have a safety net down there. Do you want to use it? How many people are willing to drop 50 feet just to see if that safety net's working okay? Anybody? Good, because you'd be crazy. You are crazy. <laughs> okay, so I'll tell you right now, it's nice that employment at will is there. And let's segue into the business judgment rule, shall we? Okay. We got statutory rights that we just talked about. Now let's look at the business judgment rule. Okay, let me give you a great example of employment at will versus illegal behavior. Okay, let's say that you work at Coca-Cola. You work at Coca-Cola, true story, right out of Cincinnati, Ohio. I don't know what they're doing in Atlanta, but I can tell you point blank. If you work at Coca-Cola and you go out on your break or lunch and drink a Pepsi product, does anybody know what they do to you? Any ideas out there? What's the Coke police going to do? They are going to fire you. Fired. Done. Zippa. Done. Okay. Now, freeze right there. No way. Yeah, Colleen. Absolutely. Okay. So, this is actually kind of a fun exercise. All right. How many people think that that's fair? That, that you should be able to fire somebody who uses the enemy? All right. And I'm just making this up. Let's just say that you work for Toro lawnmowers. And let's say you go out and buy a John Deere. Could they fire you for that? Yes, and that's because of employment at will. Now, let me just play with this a little bit. Is that a protected class, Coca-Cola? Race, sex, religion, Coca-Cola? Is that a protected class? No, it's not a protected class. It's not a statutory rights exception. It's not a common law exception, not a public uh, uh, policy exception. So guess what? You're fired. Employment at will allows you to do that. Okay. Now let's just change this around a little bit. Let's say that you've got people that are going out on break and at lunch at Coca-Cola in Cincinnati. They got all their best Bengals gear on. Okay. This week and everything. So they're going out to lunch and they have a woman, uh, there are a few female employees, a few Hispanic employees, a few black employees that go to Wendy's and drink Pepsi products. But then I go in, I'm working at Coca-Cola. I'm a white guy. And so I go in, order a uh, Pepsi product and drink it, and they fire me. Okay, do I have a lawsuit against Coca-Cola? Are they treating me differently because of my skin color? What do you think? Absolutely, thank you, Colleen, you got it. See, I want your wheels to be turning here. You know, whether you think it's right or wrong, doesn't really matter, okay? What really matters is that's the business judgment rule. You have a right to make business judgments regarding your company. And different companies have different types of things and you might look at that and you might say it's unfair. Okay, that's fine.